Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Welcome to TVE Happy Math Hour, our weekly interactive math reviews for Math 1314 and Math 1324, presented by Yvette Chuka, Ruben Carizales, and Albert Isasi. Our session will be starting soon. This session will be recorded so that you may come back to it later if you need, and so others who may have missed out on today's events will be able to come and watch it. Thank you. So now, at this time, please mute your mics for the best sound experience, otherwise the feedback could interfere with information we will be sharing today. Without further ado, I'll pass it on to our presenter so that we may begin. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mr. Isasi, and I believe also Ruben is here on the, um, I mean, Ruben Carizales is also here. And uh, we're going to present, uh, I mean, uh, this week's <clears throat> Friday Happy Hour is going to be over factoring. Okay, for that, I'm going to share my screen with you because I use animation when I present by, by using the PowerPoint. Okay, so let me share my screen so we can begin. Okay, let me uh, start slideshow. So begin. Okay, again, welcome to Friday Happy Hour. Today we're going to cover factoring. Let me go back. Okay, guys, uh, factoring is very important. Uh, I'd like to uh, point out this, I mean, point this out to the students that uh, when you're taking the, the NCBN, uh, for example, 0114 or 314, you can, uh, uh, I mean, go to a 13, 14 after you pass those classes, or at times you take them together. Also, the 0124 and the 0324, at times the 0324 is taken together with the 1324. And also, uh, factoring is explained in chapter six of uh, 0305. I believe there's only like two or three sections of 0305 uh, left uh, this semester. Anyway, all those, uh, all those courses prepare you to factoring for the upper level courses. If you're going to take a, a business, business and accounting, 1324, which is a business math, or 1325, which is a business, I mean, analysis business, you have to know how to factor. And also uh, on the right, we have all the courses that require factoring all the way to differential equations. That's why I like to emphasize the importance it is about factoring. And the foundation of factoring is, uh, is taught at, uh, at the remedial courses, which is uh, the NCBNs and the 0305. Okay. Okay, now the purpose of factoring. <clears throat> the purpose of factoring I mean, quadratic expressions is to eventually lead to a method of solving the quadratic equation. The, uh, these right there, where the, where the intercept, the x-intercept, they're called the x-intercepts, the solutions, the zeros, or the roots. And uh, you need to know how to factor to actually to obtain the, the I mean, the solutions here on the, on, on the left, which are the x-intercepts, again, the solutions, the zeros, or the roots. It all means the same thing. And this is the equation of this specific graph. So to know how to graph, right, you have to know uh, what the vertex is. But, but one of the most important thing is uh, factoring to get the intercepts, which are right here, the, the negative 4, 0, and the 2, 0. So I'm going to show you different ways to factor in this presentation. You see these are the intercepts, or the solutions, the zeros, or the roots. OK, now these are real life examples of, uh, of quadratic equations. For example, this is a bridge, right? And this is the equation for that bridge. Uh, these are all parabolas. And these are a whole bunch. This is like a polynomial, but it's a whole bunch of parabolas, as you can see. And in, and in math, uh, for example, this one on the left here, it says profit. So you're trying to find the, the maximum profit, which is a vertex. But here's where, where the these are the intercepts that we can also look for. This is how we, I mean, how we should know how to factor. And also, this is another example. And the one on the right is, for example, when this person jumps down, uh, here is, is an x-intercept right here where the, where the cushion is. So all this is related to factoring. OK, now, <clears throat> uh, when I was teaching this course, I like to use the factoring steps. Why? Because at times, some students, they don't know where to start or, or when do you stop. Uh, I mean, where do you stop? When, when are you finished factoring? So I came out with this form. This is in the book, actually, but, but I kind of modified it to, uh, um, uh, I mean, for the students' needs. And on the right, this is a factor sheet. At times, students, they don't, uh, I mean, they can afford a calculator. So this factor sheet works just as a calculator, which I'm going to show you later on in this presentation. But we're going to go over all these steps out of factor. 
Okay, uh, <clears throat> the factoring steps. The first step uh, that I ask students is, is what's the GCF, the greatest common factor? What is the highest factor to factor out? And then you go to number two. What, once you got the, the, the GCF, then you go to step two, which is determine the number of terms. And uh, as I put here, note, make sure that terms are in order. If not, we write them in order from highest degree to smallest degree before continuing. And then if you have two terms, they're going to be perfect squares, right, or perfect cubes. So these are the formulas to factor uh, in, in, in that, uh, I mean, with perfect squares or perfect cubes. And then if you have three terms, this is called the, the factoring in the form, the x squared plus bx plus c, but I call it the easy factoring because it's easier than, than the one by grouping. And number two here is called by grouping. Why? Because you can have a number here besides one. So you multiply the a and the c, that's why, uh, I mean, that's what I have here. You multiply a times c. And, and the last one, which is 2c, is by grouping. So I'm going to go over uh, all these uh, ways of factoring. OK, now before we start, we have to know the vocabulary. Uh, a quadratic expression is an expression involving a square term. Examples, you see all these expressions have a square term. You see this has three terms and it has a square term as a leading power. This is a binomial, which also has, a, I mean, the square as a leading power. And this is also a trinomial with which has uh, the leading uh, uh, power of, of a two, which is squared. These are all quadratic expressions. Now factors. Factors, they're numbers multiplied together to get another number. Okay, so example. Example number one, what are the factors of 12? Which means, how can we get 12? You see, we can get it by one times 12, two times six, and three times four. So the factors of 12 are one, you see it's one, two, three, four, six, twelve. So these are the factors of twelve. <clears throat> Example two. What are the factors of twenty? How can we get twenty? One times twenty, two times ten, four times five. So the factors of twenty are going to be one, two, four, five, ten, and twenty. So it's always good, uh, or it's always wise to get all the factors, all the possible combinations, because when you're factoring, maybe the one that you forgot, maybe that's the one that, that, that requires, I mean, that's going to be the solution or part of the answer. OK, now, greatest common factor, which is called the GCF. Remember, that, that was step number one. The GCF of, of, uh, of a set of numbers is the largest factor that all numbers share. Example number three, what is a GCF of, uh, of uh, this is supposed to be off here? of 12 and 20. You see, we already have them here, right? So the factors of 12, we already did them here on top. So these are the factors of 12, which is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 12. You see, I got them from here on, on the uh, in blue. And the factors of 20, I just got them up here, which is a, uh, the factors here in green. So what do they have in common? They have in common a, a 2 and a 4. So what's the highest factor, or what's the greatest factor that they have in common? It's going to be 4. So the GCF of 12 and 20 is 4. Okay, now this is a factor sheet. Uh, the, the factor sheet, I let my students use it during class, but not during a, an exam. Okay, because a lot of students, like I mentioned earlier, they, they can afford a calculator. This will work as a calculator to find the factors. Okay, I'm going to show you how it works. All the ones in red are called the prime numbers. Okay, everything in red is prime. But anyway, example one, what are the factors of 12 again, like, like from the previous uh, slide? And the factors are 20, right? So what do they have in common? was 12, I mean, was 4. Now, let me show you how the factor sheet works, OK? The factor of 12, so you're going to go here to 12, right? So you, I'm going to put it down here so, so you guys can see it, right? And then the factors of 20 is going to be here, the 20. So then what's the, what's the highest number that they have in common? You see, guys, the, the, the highest factor is 4, so that's my GCF. That's how you can use this, uh, this handout here. But, uh, but you have to ask your instructor, you can use it. There, there are some instructors that they don't actually use it, I mean, it's handout. But, uh, but there's some, uh, I mean, instructors that actually do. For example, I'm a, I let them use it because, like I said earlier, uh, some don't have a calculator. So this works as a calculator. You see, so the GCF is four. OK, now let's go to step number one here. OK, we're going to start with step number one. I'm going to show you examples of each one of these. So step one. The, uh, the GCF, greatest factor to factor out, OK? So for example, what's the GCF of 20 and 30? Find the factor of 20 and 30. So how can we get 20? 1 times 20, 
2 times 10, 4 times 5. And for 30, we got 1 times 30, 2 times 15, 3 times 10, and 5 times 6. So what's the biggest number or, or the greatest factor that they have in common? Or I also like to say, what's the, the, what do they have in common? What's the highest factor they have in common? They have in common a 1, a 2, and a 10, right? So the highest factor will be 10. So the GCF is, is 10. Okay, now, what is the GCF of, um, I mean, of two variables, right? We have x squared and x cubed. The, the letters in math, they're called variables. Okay, so for example, we have x squared and we have x cubed. So x squared is x times x, and x cubed is x times x times x. So how many do they have in common? They have in common one, right? They have in common two. So the GCF will be x squared. Okay, now, observation. If both terms have the same variable, the variable with the smallest degree is a GCF. You see, for example, these two terms have right have the same variable, which is x. You're gonna get the one with a with a with the smallest degree, which is x squared. So that's the observation. So every time you have the same the same variables, the one with the with the smallest degree will be the GCF. Okay, now factor out the GCF. So you have uh, an expression of 30x squared plus 20x cubed. So here we're going to factor out the GCF. The GCF right is going to be right from the numbers right we, we just did them earlier right here on the on the, on uh, on top of the screen here. We said that it was 10 right, 10 for the 30 and 20, and it was x squared for the for the x squared and x cubed. So I'm going to factor out the 10x squared. So if I factor out the 10x squared, what is left? So for example, here guys, I'm going to distribute right. So what number? times 10 will give me 30. So it's going to be 3, right? Because you can check your work by, by multiplying the 10x squared times 3 is going to give you 30x squared. You bring down the sign. And then you can ask yourself, what number times 10 will give me 20? So it's going to be 2, right? We have an x squared. We need x cubed. So we need one more x. That's why this is, this is a GCF, and this is what's left. And you can always check your work by actually distributing the 10x squared times the 3, and also the 10x squared times the 2x, which will give us 30x squared plus 20x cubed. Okay. Hey, uh, I mean, as I go along with this presentation, if you have any questions, just put it in, in the chat because I'm uh, I'm sharing my screen and I don't see your when somebody raises a hand up. And and, and perhaps uh, uh, Ms. Chuka and Mr. Carasales, they, they can uh, uh, stop me. And, and uh, if you have any questions, they can stop me so I can answer your questions as I go along. So factor out the GCF continues. Okay, exactly. There's another example here. We have uh, the expression x times parentheses 2x minus 5 close parentheses plus 2 times parentheses 2x minus 5 close parentheses. So these two terms, what do they have in common? Right? The GCF is going to be 2x minus 5 because both terms have the binomial 2x minus 5, minus 5 in common. Okay, this uh, the, the 2x minus 5 is called a binomial. That's why they have, both terms have the binomial 2x minus 5 in common. Okay, now, so, right, so if I factor out the 2x minus 5, what's left? What's left will be x plus 2. You see, so the answer for the, uh, I mean, so, so the, <clears throat> so to factor out the GCF here, this is going to be my answer. My answer will be 2x minus 5 times x plus 2. Okay, and again, this is the example is crucial for factoring polynomials with four terms, which I'm going to explain later on. Okay, if, if four terms, right? If four terms is going to be 2C, factored by grouping, which right now I'm going to show you again back the handout. That way, when, when it's four terms, it's going to be uh, 2C, factored by grouping. Okay, now this is the way the, the book explains it, I mean, the textbook. Okay, you're going to factor by grouping. You're going, to, uh, you're going to group them, and, and this is group one, the first two terms, and the second two term, and the last two terms will be group two. So you repeat the process. What does 2x squared plus 8x have in common? Right? So this is group one. So the factors of 2x squared plus 8x, right, for the, for the, for the numbers, is going to be to have in common uh, the two, right? The two will be the, the GCF between 2 and 8. Now for the variables, Right, we have x squared and we have x. Remember what I mentioned earlier, if they both have the same variable, it'll be the one with the smallest degree, which is going to be x. It's right here in green. 
So the GCF between 2x squared plus 8x is going to be 2x. Okay, now I'm going to factor out the 2x. So if you factor it out from the first two terms, what's left is going to be x plus 4. And again, you can always check your work by distributing. 2x times x will give you 2x squared, and 2x plus 4 will give us 8x. Now we're going to do group 2. <clears throat> the sign comes down, and we do group 2. <clears throat> so group 2 right, is going to be here on the right. Between three, <clears throat> 3 and 12, they have the 1 in common and the 3 in common, right? So the GCF will be 3. And you notice the, the, the 3x, right? The 3x and the 12, I mean, the, the, the term 3x, it has a variable, but the, but the last term, the 12, it doesn't have a variable, so they don't have a variable in common. So the GCF will just be 3. Now I'm going to factor out the 3. So you factor out the 3, the x plus 4 is left. And again, you can check your work by distributing 3 times x will give you 3x, and 3 times 4 will give us 12. I want to show you here like an observation. If you notice, the, the <clears throat> what was left on, on, the, on group 1, right, also matches what's, what's, uh, what's a group 2. This is crucial because I have another way to show you on the next, on the next slide. Okay, uh, okay, but I'll just wait until we get to the next slide. But observation again, the, you can have the same binomial on both sides. Okay, now what do these two terms have in common? They have in common the x plus 4. So what's left? The 2x plus 3. So this is how you factor by grouping. Okay, so that's your, your answer. Okay, now, remember I said, <clears throat> right, if it's, if it's step 4, I mean, if it's four terms, right, we're going to do a 2C, which is by grouping. So I'm going to show you another way that I modified <clears throat> grouping by, uh, I mean, grouping with four terms. Okay, again, right, we're going to have four terms. So the way I show my students is that um, I find the GCF of the first two terms, right, the 2x squared minus 5x. So the GCF between these two terms, between the, between the coefficients or the, or the numbers, right, they don't have nothing in common, just one. But, but the one doesn't really count because, uh, because it'll be the same thing if you factor it out. You, you'll be left with the same thing. Between the x squared and the x, right, the, they have in common an x. So I'm going to factor out the x. So if I factor it out, right, on the first two terms, I'll be left with 2x minus 5. And remember, I showed you about the, about the observation. So this is what I show my students, and it will always work. But what you factor out on the left, I mean, automatically put it on the right. It's going to work if it can be factored by grouping. Now the sign comes down. Now here's what you can ask yourself. What number, because something has to go here, a number has to go here. One number times, times 2x will give me 4x. And the answer is 2. And again, I can check my work. 2 times 2x will give us a 4x. And 2 times negative 5 will give us a negative 10. So I know I'm on the right path. Now what do the, the two terms have in common? They have in common the 2x minus 5. So if I factor it out, what's left? The x plus 2. Okay. Okay, now, again, <clears throat> this method is from the book, but I just modified it I mean, a little bit so students can have a better understanding because at times students have a hard time when they factor the second group because at times it doesn't really match because of the sign here, guys. If you do it this way, you can never go wrong. Okay. Again, I modified a little from the book. The binomial that is left this binomial, after factoring the GCF on the first two terms, will always be the same binomial on the right side. You see, for example, what's on the left is going to be on the right, if it can be factored by grouping. Okay, okay now, let's do now uh, two terms. So two terms is either going to be perfect squares or perfect cubes. So let's do the perfect squares first. Uh, if you have x squared minus y squared, you, uh, it's going to be x minus y and x plus y. This is called the difference of, uh, of two perfect squares. And if you have x squared plus y squared, you cannot factor it. It's going to be prime. Okay, remember, if it's a plus in between there and you have two perfect squares, it's going to be prime. So let's do some examples. So this is step two again <clears throat> from, the, from the step two factor. Determine the number of terms, right? So if it's two terms, uh, let's do the perfect squares first. So... These are considered perfect squares because how can we get x, x to the fourth power? We multiply x squared times x squared. These have to be the same, right? 
to, to give us whatever's on the left. So for example, uh, x squared is the same thing as x times x. One is the same thing as one times one. Four is the same thing as two times two and so, and so forth. The more of these that you know, the better you're gonna be off, okay? So for example, x squared minus one is equal to x minus one, x plus one, right? Following the, the I mean, the rule here, the, the difference of two perfect squares. X squared minus four is gonna be x minus two, x plus two. X squared minus nine is gonna give us x minus three and x plus three. What would x squared minus 49 be? Can somebody put it in the chat? Can somebody put in the chat, I guess, what, what, I mean, what would it be? Anyone? I'll give you guys a hint, right? So if we follow the same pattern, right? The, uh, the, I mean, the square root of 49 is seven, seven times seven, right? So it's seven squared. So this will be x minus seven and x plus seven. In the same ma manner, x squared minus 81, right? We know that 81 is nine times nine. So it's gonna be, if you notice here, I changed the sign, right? Because it doesn't matter what goes first. When you have two perfect squares, it can be x plus nine or x minus nine or reverse x minus nine times x plus nine. It doesn't matter. X squared, x squared minus 100 will give us x minus 10 and x plus 10. How about this one? This is a, this will be like a hard as it gets when, when you have, when you're factoring uh, two perfect squares. But anyway, is 25 a perfect square? Yes, it is, right? Because five times five will give us 25. Is 36 a perfect square? Yes, it's gonna be six times six. And x squared is gonna be x times x, and y squared is gonna be y times y. So this will give us five x minus six y and five x plus six y. Uh, let me go back a little one previous. Jump the gun, right? Uh, let's see here. Here, because remember that I said if it's squared, right? If you have two perfect squares, but if it's a plus, right, it's going to be prime. It means it cannot be factored. It's prime. Okay, let's try one more. X to the fourth minus 16. X to the fourth is a perfect square, right? It's x, x squared times x squared, and 16 is a perfect square, which is uh, 4 times 4, and we have a, a minus, right, in between. So this will give us x squared minus four and x squared plus four. Remember the x, x squared plus four, right? If it's plus, it's gonna be prime. So this one on the right is prime. But can we factor x squared minus four? Sure we can. Uh, uh, the four is also two times two. So this will be x minus two times x plus two, which is the x squared minus four. And then the x squared plus four, we just bring it down because that cannot be factored further. So that's, so you factor the x to the fourth minus 16. Are you guys okay up to this point? Any questions? Anyone? So far so good, Albert. They're just a little shy okay, thank probably. <laughs> thank you, my friend. Thank you, Ruben. Okay, now, now let's do the, the perfect cubes, guys, okay? Uh, perfect cubes are also crucial because you're gonna see these when you get to like, uh, I believe, Cal 1 or maybe even uh, uh, pre-Cal 2, you, you see perfect cubes. So, so I decided to actually uh, also go over them. So these are the formulas for the perfect cubes. This is the difference uh, of uh, two perfect uh, cubes, and this is uh, the sum of two cubes. And this is a formula here, guys, on, on the right. So let's put them to action. The difference in the sum. So these are considered perfect cubes. Why uh, six, uh, x to the sixth power is the same thing as x squared times x squared times x squared. And the x cube is equal to x times x times x, right, which means that uh, a can be, re I mean, one can be rewritten as one to the third power, eight can be rewritten as two to the third power, and 27 can be rewritten as three to the third power and so forth. Again, the more of these that you know, the better you're gonna be. Okay, example, x cubed plus 125. Which one is it? Is it the difference or the sum, right? So we know it's plus, so it's gotta be the sum. So let's put the formula down, right? That's my formula. So now I'm gonna let, Right, so I, so I have to rewrite it to match, uh, I mean, the formula here. So 125 is equivalent to 5 cubed. So I have to rewrite it, right? And then everywhere I see an x, I'm going to put an x. If we see a y, I'm going to put a 5. So, right, there's, those are my formulas there. So when you see an x, right, I'm going to put an x. When you see a y, I'm going to put a 5. 
x squared, so I'm going to put x squared. Now, what's uh, x times y? What's uh, x times 5 will give us 5x. And what's y squared is 5 squared, right? So now we simplify. So we got x plus 5. x squared minus 5x plus 25. That's how you factor uh, <coughs> the, the, the sum of two cubes. Okay. Let's do one more example of the perfect cubes. Now, again, these are the perfect cubes. So now we have, uh, I mean, this one here, example, this is the hardest it gets. Uh, same thing as the other one with the perfect squares, right? When you have a coefficient and the variable to a certain power. So here, right, 27 is equivalent to 3 cubed. And we know that x cubed, right, is a perfect cube. And 64 is equivalent to 4 cubed. But before we do that, right, we know it's going to be the difference formula. There's my formula. So I'm going to let, I'm going to let 3x, 3x, be my my uh, be my x, and I'm going to let 4y be my y. Okay, now, so what's x? X will be 3x. I mean, x represents 3x, and y represents 4y. Now, what's x squared? So x squared is what's 3x squared, right? So we put the 3x there. What's x? X represents is uh, 3x. And the y is represented by 4y. Again, the y is 4y. Now, we just simplify. You see, uh, 3x squared it will give us 9x squared. 3x times 4y will give us 12xy. And 4y squared will give us 16y squared. So that's how you, how you uh, factor perfect cubes. And I repeat, the more perfect cubes that you know, the, the better you're going to be off when, when you uh, reach the... the the upper level courses in math. Okay, now, so now we're going, we're leading to, uh, let's see here, to uh, three terms. Okay, so we have two, uh, three terms. I call this the easy factoring. Why? Because, uh, but this is called in the book, it's called factoring in the, in the form of x squared plus bx plus c. All right, so when, when, you, when you factor in this form, you can have here two binomials. Okay, so let's begin here. So here are the rules, okay? This is, uh, if you have x squared plus bx plus c. This this term is called the bx term. And the c, the, the, the c is called the constant term. Okay, so this is crucial when you factor. This is what I tell my students, that you have to keep focus on the constant term, on the sign of the constant term. And here are the rules. If the constant term c, if this is positive, the signs here and the binomial will be the same. If the constant term c is negative, you're going to be different signs, okay? So, for example, example number one. Are the signs going to be the same or different? Can somebody put it in the chat? Anybody? Remember, guys, if it's plus, right? If it's, if it's plus, the signs will be the same. Example number two, if it's minus, they're going to be different signs. Again, minus, they're going to be different signs. And number four, if it's plus right, the signs are going to be the same. I always tell my students, the getting the signs right is, is, half, is half the battle there uh, uh, when factoring. Because at times, I mean, students get the wrong signs. They, they, they try to match the factors of the constant term, right, without really knowing the signs. So you have to know the signs, what the signs in the binomial are going to be. So uh, I, I mean, I also give uh, I mean, my students a quiz at the beginning when, when, I, when I'm showing factoring, just give me the signs. Don't, don't tell me nothing else. Just tell me the signs are going to be the same or different. And then students ask me, hey, Mr. Isati, that's like an easy quiz. I, I say, yeah, but it has its purpose because I want you to focus on the constant term. You see, on the constant term. And again, here are the rules. If C is positive, the signs will be the same. If, if, it's, if C is negative, the signs will be different. And now, if they're the same, you can, it's going to be the sum of the factors must equal to the bx term. If they're different, it's going to be the difference of the factors must equal to the bx term. And again, this is different, right? So it's going to be the difference, and the same is going to be the sum. This is crucial for the next step that I'm going to show you. So we're going to factor all these four examples, okay? We're going to factor all these. 
Example number one. <clears throat> the signs, the signs here, guys, are the. Uh, I mean, they're going to be the same, right? Because it, it, because we have a plus here. So I always tell my students, this and you, you always bring it down, okay? And, and this sign tells you, right? Because this means the signs are going to be the same, and this tells you what they're going to be, so they're both going to be negative. Okay, now my next step is that you're going to have to find the factors of 24. And I already showed you that at the beginning of the of the of this PowerPoint, right? How to get the factors. You can use a, the factor sheet. Or you can use a calculator, right? Because uh, when you take the, the NCBN, I believe you you can use a scientific calculator and you can get the factors from there. Or if you know them already, well, that, that's, I mean, I mean, then you're better off. But uh, 24 is 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, and 4 times 6. And also, right, the, the constant term also tells you what you do with the factors. You're going to add them. Because remember, if they're the, if they're the same, same sign means it's going to be the sum. The sum of the two factors must equal to the BX term. So the sum of, uh, of the two factors that, that will give us 24 has to be equal to 10 or to negative 10. Okay. So 1 plus 24 will give us 25. 2 plus 12 will give us what 14. 3 plus 8 will give us 11. And 4 plus 6 will give us 10. So right, so this is my match here. Okay, now, what number should we put first, right? It doesn't really matter what you put first here, guys. But I'm going to show you <clears throat> when, when the difference, uh, when, you, when, when the signs are different, I'm going to show you if, if you bring the sign down. Uh, um, I mean, why is it important to bring the sign down, okay? I'm going to show you that later, okay? But, uh, but this can be reversed. It can be x minus 6 times x minus 4 or vice versa, x minus 4 times x minus 6. But this is the answer for that particular problem. Okay, now. I'm going to show you a way that uh, I believe most instructors, even the book, shows you how to factor. You can know how to factor, guys. Just just uh, just go to Google, guys, and just put factoring in and watch some some other videos. There's a whole bunch of different ways to factor. Okay, this this, this uh, way of factoring is uh is actually from uh, I believe from the textbook. Okay, again, same same uh, same process as before. Right, uh, so they're going to be different signs because this is minus. So then he, here's what the book does. They want you to get the factors of, of negative 30. How can we get negative 30? Negative 1 times 30. 1 times negative 30. Negative 2 times 15. And 2 times negative 15. Negative 3 times 10. And 3 times negative 10. And negative 5 times 6. And 5 times negative 6. So these are all the factors, right? So then it's going to be the difference, right? Uh, of the two factors must equal to the BX term. So now, here's, I, I mean, here's a reason why a lot of students struggle. Uh, I mean, I mean, doing it this way, because some students actually they don't know how to add, subtract integers. So if they don't, if they don't know how to add, and subtract, they, they're not going to be able to uh, to factor it. Uh, I mean, this way. And and also some students they don't know their multiplication tables because I've experienced that. And uh, I mean, that's why if, if you can use a calculator in your class, well, use it because you have to get all the factors because maybe the, the one that you don't know, maybe that will be the combination that you're going to use. OK, but in my opinion, this is a little bit long, especially if you have like a negative 60 there or something, right? It's going to be like a lot of factors. But I'm going to show you a different way later on, OK? But this is like, a, like a, I mean, the way the book does it and also some videos in YouTube, that's the way they do it too. So we have to get negative 7, right? So what's negative 1 plus 30? 29. What's 1 minus 30? Negative 29. What's negative 2 plus 15? Will be 13. 2 minus 15 will give us negative 13. Negative 3 plus 10 will give us 7. And 3 minus 7 will give us negative 7. Negative 5 times negative 5 plus 6 will give us 1. And 5 minus 6 will give us negative 1. Okay, so where's my match? My match is going to be negative 7, so this is my match here. This is my combo that I need to use. So negative 3 and 10 is my match, right? That means the 10 is going to be negative here on the binomial, and the 3 is going to be positive. Okay, so this is the, the factors of x squared minus 7x minus 30. I'm going to do another example this way, and then I'm going to show you the way, I, I mean, I modified it, to uh, to fit the students uh, uh, I mean to fit the students 
Um, also, guys, uh, the way I like to do things in my classes, and I believe uh, most of the instructors also do that, is that they, they want for every student not to fall behind. So, I mean, that's what, guys, I, I assume that, that my students don't know nothing, guys, just in case, so whatever level they're at, well, uh, I can pick them up uh, all together at the same time. So for example, if you're here watching this, this presentation and you know how to factor, guys, that, that's more power to you. Don't change to, to uh, I mean, to uh, I mean for this PowerPoint, don't change. <clears throat> if you know how to factor, just keep it your way if you know how to factor. But if you don't, try to follow what I'm trying to explain here. Okay, now, <clears throat> again, three terms. So again, different signs. So again, I'm gonna do it the, the way the book does it and also, uh, um, some uh, videos on YouTube, right? So this sign comes down, all right? And then the sign is going to be different, right? Because that's a negative. And we do the same thing, right? We're going to get the factors of negative 20. Negative 1 times 20. 1 times negative 20. Negative 2 times 10. 2 times negative 10. And negative 4 times 5. And 4 times negative 5. So, right? So we're going to subtract them. Which means, right, when they're different, it's going to be the difference of the two factors must equal to the bx term, which is uh, which is going to be positive one. So we here, here we have uh, negative one plus twenty will give us nineteen. Negative nineteen that will give us eight. This will give us negative eight. This will give us a one and negative one. So where's my match? My match has to be one, right? So my match will be negative four and five. Negative four plus five will give us a one. That's my match. Okay. So then the five will be the positive and the four will go with the negative. Now, this is a way, uh, I mean, I modified it to, to, to fit, uh, I mean, students' needs. So for example, this, this is what I tell my students. The first sign always comes down, okay? So I know they're gonna be different signs, right? So this one always comes down and it's gonna be minus plus. So, right, so then I get the factors of 30, right? Now I don't I don't do the, the the all the factors of negative 30. I just get the factors of 30. Okay, this is like another way to factor. How can I get 30? 1 times 30, 2 times 15, 3 times 10, and 5 times 6. Right? We're gonna subtract them. What's 30 minus? I mean the the, the difference must be equal to uh, I mean the difference of two factors must equal to the bx term, which is negative 7. Again, what's 30 minus 1? 29. 15 minus 2? 13. 10 minus 3, 7. And 6 minus 5 is 1, right? So I know this is my combination right here. But then I have to rewrite it, right? 10 and 3 is my match. Since this sign is negative, right, the biggest factor must be negative. That's why it's negative 3, negative 10 and, and 3 are my factors. Now, I got this idea from actually from a student. Because every time that, that I teach, guys, I always tell my students, if they have an easier way to explain it than the instructor or than me, let me know and then and then we'll put it to the test. And the test is the, the class gets to vote. And uh, and if they get to vote that it was easier than my way, then I from that point on I use the the I mean the, the student's way and uh, and I always give credit to the student. So this I got it from a student. This particular student she mentioned, hey Mr. Sassy, you know what I do? I said, what? She said, I bring the sign down, the, the first sign. I said, why? And at first I couldn't get it. Why? Because uh, I mean I thought it didn't make a difference. And then she said because uh, because you said in class that the rule is that the the sign of the bx term determines the biggest factor. Yeah, yeah, I did say that. And then this way, if you bring it down, you don't have to worry about the biggest factor. The biggest factor always goes first. Ah, can you? So then I, I told the class that, and then she shared with the class, and sure enough, they say, oh yeah, Mr. Sassy, it's easier than your way. So after that, I begin using uh, I, I mean I began uh, factoring in this form. Okay. Okay, now, and also, uh, also one more thing that I got from another student. Uh, <clears throat> the student also mentioned that that, uh, that the sign of the constant term, she said that she always brings it over here because she would always get confused either to add or subtract. So uh, that was her, her, her issue. And then she said, after, after I explained that this sign determines uh, the, what you do over here, if you add or subtract, she actually began doing this right here with the arrow. And, and that was kind of smart. And also we put it to the vote. And the class agreed that that was easier than my way. So those two uh, those two uh, uh, methods that I got from students, guys, is what is how is how I factor now, because I truly believe that at times uh, a student actually I mean a student will actually learn better from another student, because for some reason 
some students are, are intimidated by the instructor or, or there's a wall between the instructor and the student. And, uh, and that's why uh, at times um, students actually learn better from other students that actually know in class. So I always tell my students to, to, uh, to help each other out. And if you come with ways that, that, are, that are easier to explain to other students, let me know and then uh, this way I'll begin using them, okay? So again, let's do example number three the same way. And here's, here's uh, what I had told my student and she followed this. That, that's why she brought the sign down, okay? The sign of the BX term, right? This, this sign here of the BX term determines the largest factor. If the sign of the BX term is brought down, right? If it's brought down, then the largest factor always goes first. And that's how I began showing how to factor. Okay, now the next two examples are going to go kind of quick, guys, okay? Because th because this, once a student is actually knows this method, is not that complicated. Okay, for example, right? We know the signs are going to be different, right? Different signs. And this and we always bring it down. So it's going to be plus and a minus. The next step, we get the factor of 20. How can we get 20? 1 times 20, 2 times 10, and 4 times 5. Right? This is going to be the difference, right? So we got to subtract. What's 20 minus 1? 19. 10 minus 2 is 8. 5 minus 4 is 1. Right? So this is my match here, right? The 1. So check this out, guys. So the biggest factor always goes first. The 5 and the 4. And and after uh, I mean, students get accustomed to this way of factoring, they, they say that it's real easy. I mean, that's why we call it the, the, the easy factoring. Uh, I mean, I just made it up, right? Because... Uh, because that, that that way of factoring is not called the easy the easy factoring is called factoring in the form of x squared plus bx plus c. But after the students, uh, I mean, were able to factor, they came up with easy factoring. So I just put it up there. Okay, look at this one here, right? The signs are going to be the same. Same signs and going to be the sum of the factors. So so the signs are both going to be positive, right? We bring it down, so they're both going to be positive. How can I get 15? Factors of 15, 1 times 15, and 3 times 5. So we're going to add, right, the factors. We get 16, and we get 8. What's my match? My match is 3 and 5. And again, to keep it uniform, I always tell the students to always put the sign, the, 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 the largest, uh, I mean, the largest factor first. This way, because if I tell them um, only on certain conditions, you put the, the, the highest factor first. So to avoid confusion, I always tell them, you know what? I always put the, the, the biggest factor first. Okay. Anyway, it's do the same thing because uh, x plus 5 times x plus 3 is the same thing as x plus 3 times x plus 5. Okay. Now, last, we have to do it by grouping, right? But now, it's going to be grouping, right, when you have ax squared plus bx plus c. This type of, uh, of uh, factoring, it can be done by, uh, by trial and error or by grouping. Uh, <clears throat> Let me share why I like to do it by grouping. When, when I was doing my internship at a, at a high school here in El Paso, uh, I, I was, um, uh, I mean, the instructor told me to take over the class, right? And, and we were doing factoring. So the only way I knew how to factor was by, was by trial and error. So then I began, uh, I, mean, I mean, doing that on the board for the students, I mean, explaining the concept. And I just looked around and it seemed that everybody was confused, everybody was lost. And then the instructor told me, hey, Mr. Isasi, here, we don't do it like that. Ah, oh, can you go? So I said, oh, well, well, how do you do it, sir? And then he said, no, he would do it by grouping because it seems the, the students, it's easier for the students. So after that, I began doing by grouping. But if you're going to be an engineer or a math teacher, you have to know it by, by, by trial and error. And grouping is, is for, so everybody can actually know how to factor, especially the students that are not going for math, that are going for a, a degree that doesn't require that much math. Okay, so here's how it works. So here, guys, I'm not going to do it by, by uh, trial and error. I'm going to do it by grouping. <clears throat> so, right, so you have ax squared plus bx plus c. I'm going to multiply the first term, the, the, the coefficient for the x squared, and the constant term, right? That's why I multiply a times c. So we're going to get 30, right? So what are the factors of 30? 1 times 30, 2 times 15, 3 times 10, and 5 times 6, right? And the same rules apply, right? we got to add them. Right? So when we add them, it's going to give us 11x. So what's 1 plus 30? 31. 2 plus 15 is 17. 3 plus 10 will give us 13. And 5 plus 6 will give us 11. So what's my, what's my combination, right, that, that, that we must use? It's going to be the 5 and the 6. 
Okay, now, <clears throat> here's where I, where I added the three terms, four terms, two terms, and factor. These are the, are the steps here, guys, because at times students have a hard time, uh, I mean, doing it this way, because it's a little bit more challenging. What it means here, guys, <clears throat> that you start with three terms. Then, then the, the, the next step, you have to have four terms. If, if you don't have four terms, you're doing something wrong. Okay, so the ones on, on the, on the, uh, at the ends, you always keep them the same. So you're going to convert <clears throat> the 11x into two terms, right? That's what we factored, and we got them from here, from the 5 and the 6. So I'm going to substitute a positive uh, 6x plus 5x, right, and uh, to replace the, the 11x. Now, now you have to do it by grouping, right? And grouping was was uh, what I discussed or, or what I went over right at the beginning, right? Do it by grouping with, when you have four terms. So now, from four terms, you have to go to two terms, right? So then you're going to factor by grouping the first two terms. What do they have in common? That 3x squared and the 6x is going to be a 3 and an x. So 3x, right? So what's left? x plus 2. And I always tell the students to always, before you move on, check your work. If you distribute, it has to give you the 3x squared plus 6x. So 3x times x will give us 3x squared, and 3x plus 2 will give us 6x. So I know I'm in the right track. And remember, guys, what you what, what, uh, what was left on the left also goes on the right. And, and, and here, guys, we know it can be done this way because the, the 11 was here, right? The, the, the 11x with the middle term was actually here. If for any reason, if say this was like a like a 17, I know like an 18, for example, if there was 18x, right? Then it means that th that this won't be able to factor, right? Because because uh, the 18 won't be here. Here's how you can tell if you can factor it or not. The middle term has to be here when you add or subtract the factors. Okay, now the plus comes down. So we ask ourselves, what number times times the x will give us 5x? So the answer is 5. And again, we always check our work. 5 times x will give us 5x, and 5 times 2 will give us 10. You see, I went from three terms to four terms to two terms, one term, two terms, and now comes the factor. What they have in common, or what the GCF between the two binomials is going, or between the two terms, is going to be x plus 2. What's left? 3x plus 5. You see, I went from three terms, four terms, two terms, and factored. Okay, so that's that's the, the factors. Okay, now let me do one more. <clears throat> Again, <clears throat> we have 2x squared minus 3x minus 9. So again, we're going to multiply, right, because we have a number here, a coefficient besides 1, so it means that we're going to do it by grouping. So we're going to multiply the 2 and the 9. It's going to give us 18, okay? We don't care about the signs yet, okay? So it's going to give us 18. So then we're going to get the factors of 18. 1 times 18, 2 times 9 and 3 times 6, right? So it's going to be the difference. The difference are the factors must give us the middle term, which is negative 3x. So what's 18 minus 1? will give us 17. 9 minus 2 will give us 7. And 6 minus 3 will give us 3. Now, we have to rewrite, right? We have to uh, rewrite the negative 3x, right? And the terms of these two terms to give us the negative 3x. So the 6 has to be negative because negative 6x plus 3x will give us a negative 3x. So the negative 6x plus 3x will replace the minus 3x here on the trinomial. So again, the, the, two, uh, <clears throat> the two terms on the, on the ends, you bring them down. And then you're going you're gonna to replace the negative 3x or the minus 3x by negative, 3x, negative 6x plus 3x. And again, right, so let's check our work. We have three terms. We Now we have four terms. So now comes two terms, which means we have to factor by grouping. So 2x squared minus 6x, they have in common a 2 and an x. If we factor it out, what's left? x minus 3. And again, check our work. 2x times x will give us 2x squared. 2x times negative 3 will give us negative 6x. So I know I'm on the right track. And what, you, and what was left on the left also goes on the right. The sign comes down. And you ask yourself what number times x will give us 3x, so the answer is 3. And then we, again, we check our work. You always check your work. 3 times x will give us 3x, and 3 times negative 3 will give us negative 9. Okay, so I know, uh, I know we're in the right path. Now comes right, the, the factor form. 
So what they have in common, this, these two terms, dx minus three, if you take it out, the two x minus, the two x plus three is what's gonna be left. And that's the factor form, okay? And again, guys, these, let, let me show you how, how crucial factoring is. These are, uh, for example, Math 1324, section 1.7, quadratic equations, page 58. You see, you're gonna be uh, uh, solving these. Uh, uh, but you have to factor all these guys. You see, it's all from 1324, and this is for 1325, finding limits, right? That's number 40, finding the limit as x approaches a uh, negative two, right? So again, you have to factor, a whole bunch of factoring. And this is for the pre-count, finding the zeros, right? I believe this is uh, section 1.5. And also guys, you see it in calculus one, uh, calculus two, and calculus three, not that much, but calculus one and two for sure. So that's what, guys, you have to know how to factor. Okay, so now let's practice. Okay, so let me uh, let me end my show here, guys, so we can go back, see if you guys have any questions. Is there any questions? Thank you for answering, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. So it looks like we have no questions. Uh, Della, if we want to hand it over. Yes, thank you, Patricia. Thank you all for being here today. Please join us next Friday at 11 a.m. September 16th for our next session. And let me pull that up for you. Oh, it's loading. Thank you, ladies. Um, our next session will be September 16th, Friday at 11 a.m. for our Happy Math Hour. Please join us for the exam one review session. We do want to remind all of you about our previously recorded sessions, which are available on our YouTube playlist. Uh, we now have TBEs updated each week on YouTube. And here is a link for that playlist. It's coming right up. The session will, this session for today will also be available later today on the same playlist. Thank you, Hema, for posting that. Please know that our online tutoring is also open now and available through Blackboard, Blackboard Collaborate Ultra seven days a week from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. Monday through Sunday, and face-to-face -face tutoring is available Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., so there is help available. Just come and check it out. Thank you so much, Mr. Isasi, Ms. Chuka, Mr. Carizales, for presenting today, and thank you to audience for coming and being a wonderful audience, and we hope to see you again soon. Thank you.